Graphics card prices have started to increase over the past couple months. Not by much, but more consistent than anything we've seen since the crypto days. But the good news is AMD have just released a couple new cards, which we have added to our now 39 card comparison. This is a 7800 XT, and it's on track to be one of the best GP releases this generation, which given how things have gone recently, it's kind of like saying the tastiest marshmallow from a dumpster fire. Nevertheless, it is a good card, but for 1080p and 1440p value, the 7800 XT isn't even top 10. And this is why. The problem with shopping for a GPU is that the cards you could buy currently range from 8% inflated to over 45% discounted. So to find the best value GPUs right now, we will cover how prices have changed recently, and based on each card's performance in 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, which ones are actually worth considering at these new prices. And stay tuned to the end, because after we go over the data, I round up these videos by giving solid recommendations for budget, mid-range, and high-end, because the best value GPU often hasn't been the one I recommend the most. Let me... One second, please. Yeah, no, that is true. But I think they're going to like this more. I think, no, this is better. Thanks, anyway. You see, normally a sponsor spot goes here, but I want to show you something I think you will find much more useful. I've been teasing this recently, but I'm excited to officially announce my website, GPU Smart, the best way to quickly compare GPU performance and value. So to prove it, let me show you a couple ways this tool is unlike any other, because once you have selected a range of cards, this is where things get pretty customizable. The auto-filled performance data comes from this series, which I know you guys have been asking for access, but there's two aspects that make this tool really stand out customizable pricing and customizable performance. Customized pricing should be easy to understand. If you find a price online, even on the second hand market, you can use that price in the value calculation. You are not limited to something stupid like MSRP. You can set this based on any price you find. But the other special customization is you can also adjust the performance figures, which is especially useful if you want to compare a specific game or even data from another reviewer, because this tool is designed to give you flexibility and help you find the best value GPUs whenever you need to. And to top it off, we have specifications and graphs at the bottom for you to quickly and easily compare. It is 100% free and a great resource for anyone comparing GPU prices and performance. And we will use it a few times in this video, but I genuinely hope you do find it useful and I'll drop a link below for you to check it out. Let me know what you think. So before we take a look at performance and value, the first place that we need to start is with current prices, because it looks like something has changed recently and not for the better. Throughout this video, we will be looking over our August pricing data for every current and previous generation GPU. You can learn more about how they're collected in this video. With the 7700 and the 7800 XT marked in orange due to being newly released and a few days worth of pricing data for those instead of August for everything else. But prices compared to MSRP are still looking good with sub $200, 6600 still being a regular appearance. Arc has returned to being more discounted than Ampere this time around, but as usual, RX 6000 is still the most discounted architecture overall, and RTX 4000 is the least discounted. However, August wasn't a particularly good month compared to recent prices, and these price increases have been happening for a couple months now. Let me show you. What we have here are the four Intel GPUs I can buy here in the US. And for every card, there's been some good months and also some bad, but consistently there has been a downward trend for every model, which is great for consumers. But let's compare this to AMD and Nvidia. For everything AMD, we have similarly been on a consistent price drop since the beginning of the year, up until the last month or two where we start to see an increase in price for both current and previous generation cards. In fact, only the 6800 has consistent lower prices over the last two months, whereas everything else has increased at least one of those two months. And Nvidia is the same. Most of Nvidia's lineup has been consistently dropping pretty hard. Even high-end 3000 series plummeted a few months back, though pricing is still obviously a wild mess since the release of RTX 4000. Even so, we see something quite similar to AMD, 
consistent price increases over the last few months, with only a few models continuing to trend downwards. In fact, compared to last month, only Intel Arc has an average decrease across the board, with AMD and Nvidia price increases by about 1-3%. to for context, this is what each GPU's price drop looked like the last time we did this video. There is a lot of big drops in there. And this is what it looks like this time around. So it'll be interesting to see any newcomers for the best value GPUs this month, given how prices have changed. And I'll have the best GPU recommendations covering budget, mid-range and high-end at the end of this video. But there's one thing we need to do to get there. We need to see how AMD's new 77 and 7800 XT stack up and evaluate these GPUs in terms of performance and value, because a cheap card is not the same thing as a good value card. Let's check that out now. So before we decide a winner for best card and my recommendations for budget, mid-range and high-end, let's check out the best and worst value GPUs, covering 1080p, 1440p and 4K, starting with 1440p. What we have here are the real world prices on the left, which I go into a lot more detail about how those are collected in this video, top right. The fly out lightly just right hooked my face, but they represent a relative good price for that card over the time period we are looking at. We then have the average frame rate for our test suite in blue and the cost per frame in green. Essentially, what you want to do is focus on cards with the frame rate you want to target and then see which ones have the best value or the lowest cost per frame. And then we will cover which cards get my recommendation for each price target later because the best value card hasn't always been the one that I recommend for a variety of reasons. And I'll explain why when we get there because a prime example of this is the ARC A750, which comes out on top this month for 1440p gaming value. For AMD, if you didn't watch this video, you might think that the 7800 XT would be the best value, but this is only true in the context of mid to high end because there's a lot of AMD cards that have better value, with the 6600 being the best value AMD GPU at 1440p. But given my experience with the ASRock 7800 XT Phantom Gaming, I'm still likely going to recommend it later, but counterintuitively, not based on the figures that we see right now. For Nvidia, they also win a crown, the worst value GPU, currently being the RTX 3090. In fact, anything 3080 and above, I really wouldn't even consider when it comes to RTX 3000 series. But the G6X 3060 Ti continues to be a great value Nvidia card in the sub 350 range. And the 4060 is the best value 1440p card for Nvidia's current generation. Making these the top five best value 1440p cards ordered by best to worst cost per frame. And we are going to look back at this to see if there are any cards that continue to appear in the top five for other resolutions and also filtered by high refresh options at the end. But in terms of prices, all of these cards other than the A750 have increased in price slightly over the last month. So make sure that you apply the price that you find online within GPU Smart if they are different and it will figure out the best value option with your custom prices. But how does this translate to 4K and 1080p? Well, the 4K results show something similar, but a lot of these cards are not able to hit a consistent 60 frames per second in our test suite at 4K. So if we only focus on cards that can achieve 60, the results break down to this, with the Nvidia G6X 3060 Ti coming out on top in terms of value. And I think one of the first times that we've said that about Nvidia in this series, and AMD 6750 XT coming in a close second. Though because they are right on the limit of that 60 FPS mark, it's worth mentioning that in a game like Horizon Zero Dawn, we can get in the high 60s on favor quality at 4K, but in Cyberpunk on high, it's more like the high 40s, low 50s. So bear that in mind when we're talking averages. The absolute most demanding titles will be lower than what you see here. These figures are from a wide range of games. But the 7800 XT looks to be a good option here. If it stays at $500, it has significantly better value compared to AMD's other current generation cards, though the 7800 XT is still a disappointing value proposition compared to their previous generation prices. So it'll be interesting to see how that changes next time when we have the full month's worth of pricing data for the 78 and 7700 XT, because I think prices could change quite a bit 
making these the top five best value 4K60 cards, ordered by best to worst cost per frame. But realistically at 4K, a lot of demanding titles are going to want more memory, more than what many of these cards offer. So my recommendations later are probably going to drop a few of these cards. But in terms of prices, again, for all the cards that existed last month, they also have had an increase in price, other than the 3060 Ti. Let me know your thoughts as to why. My instincts say AI demand is to blame, but honestly, I need to properly look into this to see if it's going to get worse, because this is the first time that we are seeing these price increases. And brings us on to the most popular resolution. Let's take a look at 1080p, which does mix things up a bit. Basically, all of the cards are listed here will be playable at a 60 FPS experience, but the winner goes to the 6600 at $190 and is an ideal 1080p card, providing a decent gaming experience. A lot of the Intel GPUs end up performing quite similarly, so as with the 1440p results, the best value typically goes to the A750, which claims second place for 1080p, at only about 2% worse value compared to the 6600. For Nvidia, the G6X 3060 Ti is still the best value option, even though it does rank seventh overall. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just looking at the 3090 and laughing. Prices in this region have just been so messed up for so long. So let me know below. Is it worth including them still, even if it's just for the comedy factor? But I'm also wondering if there's any reason why you would buy a more expensive 3080 Ti over a 4070 Ti, for example, because these graphs are getting pretty big. But speaking of removing cards, let's take a look at 1080p mid to high refresh, because this is an extremely popular use case for a lot of gamers. And in our test suite, that breaks down to this with the 6750 XT beating out the 7800 XT that is tied for second place along with the 6800. Nvidia's best value here ends up being the RTX 3070 Ti while still maintaining 144 FPS and ranked number six overall with none of the ARC GPUs making the cut. And what that means is that these are the best value GPUs for each resolution and also filtered by mid to high refresh. But now's an important time to understand the other characteristics of a GPU. And if buying a slightly worse value card is actually going to give you a better experience. When you consider things like upscaling, memory capacity, streaming, professional applications, these are important factors that need to be taken into consideration as it can have a big impact to your experience. So let's go over my recommendations for budget, mid-range, and high-end. As is typical in this series, we allow budget, mid-range, and high-end to be self-defined by the market. What this means is that out of 39 cards, the lower 13 are budget, up to $290. The next 13 are mid-range, up to $500, and the high-end is everything after that. So let's cover the best GPUs for each manufacturer within those market segments. I'm going to lightly touch on the pros and cons of each manufacturer when relevant, but we go into a lot more detail as to why you should go for Nvidia, AMD, or Intel in this video. Before I then leave you with a couple standout winners to focus on. Up to date GPU prices will specifically be in the comment section below for whenever you watch this video. And let's start with budget. Out of 13 cards, there are three that stand out the most to me. The 6600, the 6700 and the RTX 4060. The 6600 is the best value 1080p card and at sub $200, it's honestly the one that I would go for. Even though the A750 is technically the best value for 1440p and up, but as we discussed in our manufacturer comparison video mentioned earlier, Intel Arc can be temperamental. So you're likely to have a more consistent experience with the 6600. But if you can spend a bit more and be on the higher end of budget, the 6700 is about 10% worse value for 1080p gaming, but does perform about 20% better than the 6600 and has 25% more memory, which could see it prolong its useful lifespan, as we discussed in this video the truth about your 8GB GPU. There is less 6700 stock out there, but if you can find one around the $270 mark, it is the fastest budget option. Great 1440p and getting close to 1080p high refresh territory. 
For NVIDIA, I think this is the first time the RTX 4060 has come into the budget category. And although the RTX 3060, the 12 gigabyte version, could be nice in certain situations, the RTX 4060 is better value at 1080p and 1440p and is unfortunately the only budget card to support DLSS 3 upscaling. So I personally would lean 4060 over 12 gigabyte 3060, unless I needed that 12 gigabytes for professional applications or content creation. Because for gaming, the 4060 is newer, it's more efficient and has better ray tracing, and the value proposition will only increase with DLSS 3 supported games. So go 6600 to maximize a limited budget, go 6700 if you have a bit more to spend, and go 4060 or 12 gigabyte 3060 if you need Nvidia. For the mid-range, this includes cards up to $500, and there are some annoying products and prices in this section. The G6X 3060 Ti continues to be great value for Nvidia at around the $320 mark, and it's the same price with similar performance compared to the 6700 XT. But the AMD card has 50% more memory. It's a bit of a toss up here, but I would probably go Nvidia, especially if you would benefit from better ray tracing, content creation, stuff like that. And go AMD if memory capacity is a concern. It kind of annoys me that the 4060 Ti 8GB has the same memory capacity and similar performance as the 3060 Ti it's meant to replace, but with a $50 upcharge for stuff like DLSS 3. And then to get a decent amount of memory on the same card, you are looking at another $100 on top of that, making the 16GB version absolutely terrible value. At that point, you're just so close to the 7800 XT's current price, and for the money, it is currently a great 1440p and 4K card. But that might change for the better. This is where you need to remember something quite important. AMD's previous generation cards have gotten better over time, better performance due to optimizations. And based on this trend and what I've seen, I would feel pretty confident that the 77 and 7800 XT have more performance to give over their lifespan. So even though the 7800 XT is similar value compared to AMD's previous top tier cards, those are probably not getting any faster now. They've had about as much performance as you can extract from them. Whereas the 7800 XT likely will, making it my recommendation for more of the top end of the mid range. And brings us onto the lackluster high end. RTX 3000 just isn't a consideration here, and my recommendation has typically been more of the 6900 to 6950 XT due to their unrivaled value. But with the release of the 7800 XT, those three cards are now so close in performance to each other, but the previous generation end up being worse value, with less hope of performance improvements. So the conclusion here is that there really isn't a compelling high-end option, especially at the lower end of the scale, as the 7800 XT slots in the middle of the 4070 and 4070 Ti in terms of raster performance, but it's currently about $100 to $250 cheaper with more memory. And similarly, everything else in the high-end is scaling real hard away from the 7800 XT's value. So if you really do need the additional features of Nvidia and better ray tracing, unlike the 4070, the 4070 Ti is actually actually a high-end card, and compared to other high-end options, its value proposition is actually pretty good. But the 12 gigabytes of memory on a card of this caliber does put me off. But it's also hard to recommend the 4080 and 4090 due to their poor value. Though if you were looking at those, value likely isn't a concern for you is it? Making my standout top picks. The sub $200 6600 for gamers on a budget. A great 1080p and competent 1440p card. Next is the 3060 Ti G6X version from Nvidia, which continues to be a standout option for Nvidia value. NVENC, DLSS, CUDA support, and a great 1080p and 1440p card. But the card that has shaken things up the most is the 7800 XT. A great value at $500, high refresh 1440p, and even competent 4K gaming. And it's likely only going to get better with time. Let's just hope that prices don't continue to increase. And if they do, GPU Smart will be even more useful. So check out the comments section where you'll find updated best prices for all of those GPUs. But that only answers half the question. 
because once you know which models to focus on, how do you choose which version to go for, given that there's like a dozen different options for each model? Should you even pay extra for a better cooler design, power delivery, or even aesthetics? Well, check out this video, where we cover a wide range of differences between GPU versions to help you understand what features are worth your money and where it may be better just to save that little bit of cash. And you can check that out by clicking here. Otherwise, guys, share, like, subscribe. They are always appreciated, and I hope you have an amazing day.